Hello and welcome to Independent VFX. I'm Scott Newman and in this tutorial we'll create a cool looking 3D afterburner effect in Adobe After Effects without the need for any plugins. This effect is a really great addition to your jet strike scenes, especially when you have atmospheric shots of jets flying at night or sunset. To start off with, we'll build the effect against a black background so we can easily see what we're doing. Then we'll go ahead and apply these same techniques to an element jet strike scene where you can parent your effect to the aircraft model in 3D. Right, so the first thing you want to do is get some reference, do an image search for afterburners at sunset or night, um, and you need to just take a look at what's going on inside an afterburner. So if we look at this image here, you see we kind of have this big outer flame um, with these smaller rings inside and if we just look through some other images you see sometimes it uh, seems to render or result in different colors but it always seems to have the structure of this bigger outer flame with these kind of smaller ring structures inside it. Just look at a few more there's a great looking one. So that's really what we aim aiming for is that kind of look so Let's go into After Effects and I will start by creating a solid and I'm going to choose kind of a hot orangey color, something like that, say OK. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab my circular mask tool and I'm just going to switch on these title safe guides so I can see where the center of my comp is and holding shift I am going to draw a circle and I'm just going to double click this mask and move it around so that the center point is roughly in the center of my comp. Right, then I'm going to switch off these guides again because they tend to get in the way. Come down here to your orange solid, open up the mask controls, you'll see you've already got one mask. What you need to do is duplicate that mask um, on an Apple that's Apple D, I think on a Windows machine that's Control D. So there we go, I've duplicated that mask. So there's two identical masks. The bottom one I'm going to set to subtract. I'm going to open up its properties and pull in the mask expansion, probably to about there. Then to my first mask, I'm going to just up the feather amount ever so slightly. And to my bottom mask, I'm going to up the feather amount quite a bit. Probably make the expansion a bit bigger. So we're going to end up with something that looks very much like that. Now what you want to do for this layer is switch on 3D. At this stage, to save ourselves some time later on, we're just going to open up material options. We're going to say accept lights off, accept shadows off. Then we are also going to set this layer to add. And once you've done all of that, Take the shape and go layer pre-compose. We'll move it into a new composition, all the attributes into that new composition, say OK. What we're going to do again is just make sure it's a 3D object. Open up our material options again here. Make sure except lights is off, except shadows is off. And again set it to add. Then we are going to create a null object, so layer new null object. And this null object also needs to be a 3D layer. We can just switch off its visibility. And we're going to take this orange object we've created and we are going to parent it to that null. Then I'm going to start duplicating this layer. So like I said, Apple D on an Apple machine or I think Control D on a Windows machine. And there we go, I've duplicated the layer once. And now I'm going to open up the scale attributes by pushing S and I'm going to make this one 90%. I'm going to push P and I'm going to put the position 250 pixels deeper into the composition. So these layers are both parented to that null object and if I come up here now and rotate this null object in the y-axis you can see exactly what I've just done. So I've created two of these circles, um, they're both additive and I've just offset them in Z space by 250 pixels and I've made the one smaller than the other. So let's just reset that null object to zero. And now I'm going to continue this process. I'm going to take my bottommost orange solid, I'm going to duplicate it again. 
This bottom one, I'm going to push another 250 pixels into the composition. And I'm going to scale it to 80%. And I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to scale them down each time by 10%. And positionally, I'm going to put, keep putting them 250 pixels deeper into the comp. Now, I know there are ways to automate this and to do this with scripts but uh, I'm just gonna do it manually. So there we go, let's see what this gives us. I'm just gonna rotate my null again to get an idea of what's going on here. And there you can see what we've got. I've created kind of this, uh, this cone of these objects that diminish in scale as they head off into the Z axis. So that's our comp. I'm just going to reset this null object to zero on the rotation. And let's name this comp. Let's call this, let's call it 3D Afterburner Setup. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my 3D Afterburner Setup comp. I'm going to take it here and just make, drop it into a new composition. And in this new composition, again, I'm going to switch on 3D. And I'm going to use this button here, um, which basically allows all my settings from the previous comp to show up and show through in this comp. Then I'm going to create a new null object. And I'm going to parent this to that null. Make that a 3D null. And now what we're going to do is just rotate this, uh, this null object in the y-axis again so we can see our cone shape. And I'm also going to just scale this null down. And I'm going to move it a little bit left. The next step is we're going to take this, this um, 3D Afterburner setup layer. We're going to duplicate it. The top one I'm just going to give, I'm going to label it with an orange color. The bottom one I will label with a blue color. And for now I'm just going to switch off the visibility of that bottom layer. And I'm going to work with this top orange layer. So what I want to do is I want to apply effect blur, a fast blur of just say 10 pixels. I'm then going to apply a directional blur. For now I'm going to set this to 90 degrees. And you're going to see what happens here is as I turn up this blur length, you can see what it starts doing to our 3D afterburner setup. It starts to kind of blur it and smear it. This top orange comp I want to be my kind of ring structures inside the afterburner. So I'll leave this set to probably about 50 pixels. And then just to be able to control my color at a later stage I'm going to apply color correction, hue saturation and I won't access that just yet. But then I will come and I'll copy all of these effects, copy them choose my lower blue layer which I will now switch on. I'll switch off that top orange layer and I'm going to just paste all these effects onto that layer. And now for this layer I'm going to come and turn this blur length all the way up. Probably to around 150 pixels. There we go and you can see what we're getting. And then I'm going to come and adjust the color of it here. I'm just going to swing the hue until I get kind of a nice blue gas flame looking color. I guess something like that. Now if I switch on my orange layer and my blue layer together, you'll see what we're starting to get. And what I want to do here is set both of these layers to add. And there we go. And now taking a look at this, this top orange layer is probably a little strong. So I'll pull its opacity down and I'll tweak the color a little bit into the kind of, there we go. And if I come and rotate my null object on the Y axis, you'll see that it's a nice 3D effect. What you will notice though is when we look at it from directly side on, we lose it completely. That's obviously because the layers making it up are not true 3D layers, they're actually flat 2D layers. And now what I'm going to do just for demonstration purposes is apply <clears throat> a glow effect to this. Just again on this black comp that we've got, but we will come back later and do this in a 3D element comp. 
So I'll just use an adjustment layer for this. Layer new adjustment layer. Let's just call this glow. I'll come here to my effects and presets and search for glow. There it is, stylized glow. I'll drag that across here onto my adjustment layer. And by default, it doesn't look great at all. So we will come here and we'll say, instead of using original colors, we will use our own A and B colors. For your A color, you can choose kind of a fiery orange, something like that. And for your B color, you can kind of choose that gas flame blue. And now what you want to do is turn your glow threshold down a bit, glow radius up, and glow intensity probably down a fraction. So you can see here this part of our afterburner now gets a really nice hot look. Um, and again, as I rotate my null object, you start to get a sense for how this afterburner will look. Now, one problem with this effect, or one limitation rather, is if I start to rotate this flame at an angle like that, you'll see now that our directional blur is falling apart. And what you'd have to do in this instance is you just need to come up here, solo your layers, and adjust the direction of your blur until it lined up correctly with the angle you have. There we go. So unfortunately the one limitation of this effect is it is kind of a, a bit of a 2D, 3D cheat. Right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna just build a little bit of life and randomness into this flame. And we're gonna do that with the blue flame. So what I'm gonna do is open up its scale properties. And I'm aware you can do this with an expression, but to be honest, I just find it easier to do it using the wiggler. So Create a keyframe for scale at the start of your timeline and another keyframe at the end. Select both your keyframes, holding shift and you click both. And come down here to this palette called the Wiggler. If that palette isn't open, you can access it up here under animation or window rather. Wiggler, there it is. And so what I'm gonna tell it to do is I wanna apply a kind of a variation or a wiggle and I've already got my settings set up here, a frequency of five wiggles per second with a magnitude of five. Um, and in this case, I only want to apply it to the Z axis. I want this blue flame to kind of stretch back and forth along the Z axis. And my noise type, I will leave to smooth. So let's just say apply. And there you can see it's created a whole bunch of keyframes. And if we do a RAM preview of this to here, and there you can see what we're getting. We're getting this slight sort of back and forth stretching movement on the blue flame. So I'll stop it there. The next thing we want to do is just access our orange layer and actually just scale it down a fraction just so it fits neatly inside our blue flame. Something like that would probably do. Then I want to come to my blue flame again and open up its opacity properties. I'll push T on the keyboard, or you could just manually flip it down. Um, and this time I will use an expression. I'll use a simple wiggle expression to wiggle the opacity of this layer. So I'll alt click the stopwatch here and I will type wiggle 25, which is the frequency 25 times a second, comma, and then the magnitude. And I'll probably want it to fluctuate by about 10 or 20 percent so let's try 20 close our brackets click away and then let's watch a ramp preview so you see there we have this random flickering okay looking at that it's a bit much so i'll turn that down to 10 rather 10 let's take a look at that there we go much happier with the way that looks then our final step is just to introduce a bit of sort of flame tongues and randomness into our blue flame. So again, select the blue, effect, distort, turbulent displace, and whoa, you can see what that's doing. Um, so you wanna move this turbulent displace up in the layer stack here, below your first bl fast blur, but above your directional blur. Um, and what you wanna do is 
You can leave the amount at 50, but you want to turn your size right down. So it's not really affecting the shape too much of your blue, but it is introducing these kind of random streaks that will feel like tongues of fire once we animate this effect. So if I open up our effects down here in the timeline and I open up Turbulent Displace, and this parameter here for offset, again, we're going to use an expression um, to offset it, but have a look at what happens when I scrub it. There you go, you start to see the effect happening up there in the comp. So we will just use um, a wiggle expression again to offset this value. So I'll alt click the stopwatch and I will type wiggle. And again, every sort of frame, I want it to be different. So I will say 25 times a second is my frequency, comma. And we want this thing to make huge jumps now. So I'll say, say 5,000 pixels. I want every frame to look completely different. Close my brackets, click off the expression. And now if we RAM preview this, we should get quite a nice random flickering flame texture within our blue fire. There you go, you can see what we're getting. Now again, you can come and customize the look of this. Um, you might decide that your orange rings are too visible, so you could pull the opacity down on those. But essentially, this shows you the overview of the workflow we are gonna use when we're in a 3D comp with Element. Um, we will apply all these post effects to our 3D Afterburner setup um, in order to get this look.